The third and final week of the preseason is here. A fourth exhibition game is a thing of the past. It's the Finns and the Bucks, and it's coming right up on EA Sports. The EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us on the west coast of the Sunshine State. Downtown Tampa is the spot, Raymond James Stadium. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis with you. And now we sit, CD, at week three of the preseason. And this is the one that the coaches probably think is pretty valuable, right? Certainly. This is the dress rehearsal. This is the one where your starters are going to play. You might even game plan a little bit more than you do with a normal preseason game. And then you've got to decide, do you bring them back after halftime and get them going again in the third quarter so they're ready to go when the regular season begins? I'm eager to see how these coaches will handle that. Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started. And off we go from Tampa. Flexing his muscle at the 30. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. And the Bucks getting ready to go on offense for the first time. And it's Baker Mayfield leading him out in his second season as a Buccaneer and his seventh overall. And he had a most impressive bounce-back season last year nearly leading his team to the NFC Championship game. That's not something you see every day, and he was rewarded for it as Tampa Bay decided to make him definitely their quarterback for the future. Now for him, he wants to prove it's not a one-year thing, and in fact, he is the long-term answer for this franchise. In motion right, Evans. On the first snap, here's Mayfield. He completes it to Evans. Finding room at midfield. Still going. Mike Evans, touchdown, Tampa Bay. Mike Evans, 70 yards. And the Bucs will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. That is a quick strike, one play all the way to the house. You know, the pass was fine, but that run after the catch, impressive. An absolute horrible time. Of course, any time like this is a horrible time for a defensive breakdown. But where's the tackling? Where were the safeties? You don't expect him to catch the ball, and next thing you know, he's running into the goal post this early in the game. That's not supposed to happen. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. And that one gives the Bucs a 7 to nothing lead. They certainly made quick work of that, ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see, just one play resulting in the touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And bulldozing his way through. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Dolphins head out, led by the NFL's leading passer in 2023. Now in his fifth season, to a tongue of Iloa. And the tendency for most of these guys is to want to match things right away because they have a lot of confidence in their talent, too. They just saw a big strike against their team, and you know they're thinking to themselves, I can get this back right now on one play. Well, if it's there, you take it, but otherwise, just go ahead and calm your team down. Run the offense, get things going, and see how things settle in. In motion left is Beckham. Here's Raheem Mostert, the local product from right here in Florida. And he is going to lose yardage here. Now a stoppage here as it looks like we've got a Dolphin shaken up on the play. And the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll send a receiver here in motion right. 
Second down. Here's Mostert again. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 17 yards for the Dolphins there as they've got themselves a first down. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes there's a little tread left on the tires. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now Tua. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. And this works out well as it'll kick out of bounds at the 11-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Here's second and ten. A first carry for Rashad White. And not much here as he'll get it to the 11, maybe the 12-yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. That is caught, and he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. So give him two yards there on the completion at its second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. 
Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Mayfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Still going inside the 20. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Mike Evans with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Bucs lead this now 13-0 here in the opening quarter of the ball game. Well, this has been a flawless start for them. They score, they get the stop, and they score again, Charles. Complimentary football at its finest. You just mentioned how they got it done. They scored. The defense got the ball back for them. They score again. That's the way you win ball games. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. A drive that time of six plays. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. So Miami coming out for their second drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here, in a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. On the move past the 40. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill, 72 yards. And the Dolphins are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. Well, there is no doubt that this offense was in desperate need of a quick answer, and they got it. One play. And they're right back in this game. Because you got the sense if they stalled out here and then another score on the other side to make it a three-score game, could have gotten ugly. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that one makes it 14-7. to well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit pay dirt. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. Here's second and seven now from the 28. 
throwing Mayfield. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. You know, last week I remember asking you, what would an offensive coordinator be looking for week two of the preseason? Now we're in week three. Defensive coordinator-wise, what's he looking at? For the most part in preseason, you're playing pretty basic stuff, pretty vanilla defenses. You're looking for guys that play with abandon, that just go out and make plays. You kind of let their athletic ability take over in order for you to notice them. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. Fielded at the 20. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. And just a 30-yard punt that time. And it'll be Dolphin football. And the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Hill going to go in motion right. A little jet sweep to start the drive. Has a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's a second and nine. Throwing now is Tungamailoa. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Looking to pass to him. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Play action, now it's Tua. Throw right side, going to be caught here by Ronald. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. And again, it's Tungavailoa. Short throw to Smith. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. And it's a bit of a bounce-back season a year ago for John U. Smith when he set career highs in both catches and yards in his lone season in Atlanta. The Dolphins signed him this offseason in hopes that they see that continue. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and ten at the 43. Two are going to throw. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill, complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. What a drive this has been, just chewing up the yardage. And here's one of their best plays yet, as they finally get down into the red zone and look to finish this off with six. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. 
Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Joe Tryon Shoyinka showcasing the pass rush. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. If you take a big sack, it could push you out of range. And that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. So after a rare misstep on this drive, they'll try to make amends on second and 15. Here's a toss play right to Mostert. He was trying to turn the corner, but he will go nowhere. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Able to find a seam for 14 yards, but still now facing a fourth down after the scramble. Well, it's not going to be a first down, but that's a nice job of picking up yardage on third and long. Sometimes you just have to take what the defense gives you. And in this case, it wasn't enough to pick up the first down. Tua on fourth down. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Dolphins are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that's what you've got your tough little slot receiver for, isn't it? Right there, those fourth down conversions in the middle of the field. He knows that's where he has to make his living, and that's where he has to make plays to help his team. And no one is asking him to do anything more or less than do exactly what we saw there. From the gun, it's Tua. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from drawing level. Still first quarter, two receiving touchdowns for him. How are they going to slow him down? I think they're thinking about altering their game plan. Whatever they came in with, now maybe you switch a better cover guy to him. Or... You make sure you have more people in his general area, wherever he lines up, to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. Sanders now to add the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. Making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defenses, getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 24. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And this one nearly picked off. Yeah, kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early, but it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Now a second and 10. They run straight ahead here with White. They'll get only three there, so it leaves them with a third and seven ahead. The passing game's been working quite well so far, but the running game's been a little bit of a struggle, and that's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. 
Mayfield now. This is caught by Evans. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A big one there on third down. They hit for 30 yards. I think we already know that this guy's going to be ready when they ring the bell for week one. That play, almost routine for him, but still, nice to know that he's still got it. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 42-yard line. To throw, Mayfield. Looking Mike Evans' way again, and he's got another one. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll make it second down. Here's Mayfield. It's hauled in by Shepard. He's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Third and two. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And this one is right down the middle. And they take a 17-14 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take punts you really don't want to do that in this case they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game after the main field goal here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away a lane opens here he's past the 30 and good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Dolphins offense returning to the field. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. And they'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunky yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Second down and six now. Tua sets up to pass it. Throw caught by Achan. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, try to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. From midfield, here's Tua. Short throw to Smith. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 43, it's second and three. In motion goes the tight end. Here's Tua. That's complete to Mostert out of the backfield. 
And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 31-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Again, they will throw it with Tungabailoa. And that'll be incomplete. Offense is moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Second and ten. Now Tua. Short throw to Smith. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. Going to the air, Tugavailoa. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That'll go as a pickup of eight. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now two are going to fake the jet sweep and the handoff as he'll drop to throw it. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Now a give to Mostert running right. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Typically we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And that is incomplete. There is no denying they want to get him involved. That's already the fifth time that they've looked his way in this first quarter. So that tells me defensively that they want to insist on going in that direction. Make sure you've got your best people in the area to try and take that away. Sanders' kick is good, and that'll do it for the first quarter of play. These two teams all tied after one. It's Dolphins football here as we begin the second quarter. As they've got it as we resume action. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. And able to get this out to the 25. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal. But they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and ten at their 25-yard line. In motion left, Godwin. Throwing, Mayfield. 
That one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. These offensive starters still out there in the second quarter. You would think the plan's for them to at least play into the third quarter, if not all the way through. Yeah, it might go by feel. If they have a really good first drive to start the third quarter, they might pull them after that. If not, might leave them out there a little bit longer, but I'll guarantee this, they'll be gone by the start of the fourth quarter. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially nothing on that one, no gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. From the gun, Mayfield. And he is caught, and he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Delivering the pass here to Evans on the out route. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. Well, he looked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He has such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps, and delivers a big play here for this offense. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory, down at the 33. Evans comes in motion right. Mayfield to throw it. There's Evans again, complete. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. He'll get that out to the flat to right. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Mayfield looks to throw. And it's caught. And the Buccaneers are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Oh, nice job there putting the ball right in the doorstep of the goal line. Couldn't quite get into to pay dirt, but he got awfully close. Let's see if they can cash it in over the next couple of plays. White. Diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. He finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Oh, 
Well, a dangerous return man showing it here. And they'll have very good starting field position as he's up just shy of the 40. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys. You always hear about that and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Two are going to throw. It's caught. Back up. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. Short throw to Smith. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. They've looked his way quite a bit, and in my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. In motion, Hill. On play action, here's Tua. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. He's put up numbers in this one by pushing the envelope a bit. Mike McDaniel, he's going to ask him to take a closer look at this call, and out comes the challenge flag. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So good decision there by Mike McDaniel to throw that challenge flag. They rule in his favor. Sanders on for the extra point. And we've got a tie game here in a back-and-forth first half. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Nothing separating these two sides. 24 all our score as he sends this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. They stay on the ground with White. Oh, he sheds himself free. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good, 
and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Edmonds. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Ten yards there and a Buccaneer first down. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. First down, here's White. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game, and that's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides. But to see the ball in a running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. That'll be taken in downfield by Godwin. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. That one goes for 24 yards. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. This ball complete to Durham. It'll be a gain of five, and it's second down. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. To throw, Mayfield. He's got some room to operate. And the Bucs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence. And that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. White is into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Well, he's been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with the touchdown run. McLaughlin for the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. 
The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Off of play action. Tug of Iloa. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Logan Hall fighting through and dropping him for the sack. And he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Tua sets up to pass it. Under pressure, they got him again. That's Kalijah Kansi in to get him down. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And, partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's the game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. They'll look to throw here. And they'll get this into the hands of Hill complete. They'll get 19 out of this, but it will still bring up a fourth down. There's another example what defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They give up a few more yards than they wanted to but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. And here's Jake Bailey now. <laughs> 31 yards on the punt there, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, Maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action, and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Quick throw, and Mayfield completes it. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and four. 
In motion left, Godwin. Now Mayfield. And all the caught down. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line, that's where they'll take over. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. In motion, Hill. Following the fumble recovery, here's Tua. He finds his target, Beckham. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. They faked the handoff. Now Tua. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Well, he's been the guy already over 100 yards here in the first half. Could have had a lot more if he would have been able to haul that one in. Yeah, in fact, our statistician Marvin was already handing me a piece of paper with that yardage totaled on it. He thought that catch was going to happen just as you and I did as well. Here's Tonga Vailoa to throw. It's Hill, complete. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Again, they will throw it with Tonga Bailoa. Touchdown! Devon Achan from 10 yards out. And the Dolphins are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Mm. Today is track shoes, because that's what <laughs> we've seen with these offenses. Yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far, and fun to watch. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And we've got a tie game here in a back and forth first half. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. 
Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Mayfield down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Third and three. Throwing Mayfield. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Jake Camarda sent on now to punt this away. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? I would have to think that would be the goal for sure. I don't think you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity. Push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. So minus a disaster on your part, you've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Here's Tua. It's caught by OBJ. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Now they need two. Here's third down. Play action, now it's Tua. And that nearly intercepted. Well, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. But instead, it's fourth down. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. It's just a 32-yard punt with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. Mayfield. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Just need a yard here, second and one. Mayfield to throw it. Evans has it left side. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. 
from the shotgun. It's Mayfield. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. And his kick here is good. And they have regained the lead. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Tua, the final shot before half. Short throw to Smith. And gets by him, and now a little daylight. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando. There standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thank you very much. Week three of the preseason is here. Everyone wrapping up their exhibition schedule. No games for the league on Labor Day weekend. And then it all begins. The 17-game regular season gets underway on the Thursday after Labor Day with the NFL kickoff game. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. McLaughlin now to kick this one away. Oh, some strong running. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Dolphins offense and Tua Tonga Vailoa headed back out onto the field. And we'll take you through some of the highlights here. You'll notice he had a hand in a lot of them so far. He's got this offense rolling right now. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far in the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. Two are going to throw. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A gain there of 30 big ones. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. 
And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. But it looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. In motion, Hill. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. Well, they've certainly spread the ball around so far, but they're definitely getting everyone involved now when you're throwing it to the fullback. It just shows how versatile this offense is and how everyone is a threat. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Looking to pass to him. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range, no sense forcing anything, and he made sure he didn't. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. Made his first, this now from 46 yards away. The kick by Sanders is good, and that's going to tie the ball game at 34. So they come away from this opening drive in the third quarter with only three, but it does draw them even. Yeah, and that has to be job one, doesn't it? A touchdown definitely would have been nice. We know that. But here, you get back on even terms, and now you've got most of the second half to try and get yourself into a position to win. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And their three-point halftime lead gone now back to a tie game. But, Charles, I don't imagine that changes too much for this offense. I would agree. I don't think it changes much at all, whether it's a three-point lead or a tie game. They know they have their work cut out for them, and they were going to run their offense in the same vein. And they'll come out with a three-tight end look on the first play of the drive. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. As we surmise, Charles, most of the starting units still out there for this third quarter. First time this preseason that they played into the second half. And that's by design. Most of the time by this point of the preseason, you want them to go into the half, cool down, and then come back out and warm up to start the third quarter like you would a regular season game. That's exactly what they wanted to get done. Looking downfield for Godwin. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They certainly had the right read on that one. The weak spot in a cover two defense, right down the middle because it really stresses the safeties, and they're going to be a little bit frustrated they weren't able to connect on that one. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll go up the middle with White. A three-yard gain and enough for the first down. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? You got to be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. And they'll send the tight end in motion. To throw, Mayfield. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Second down and a little more than a yard here. Shepard will go in motion right. Here's Mayfield. It's hauled in by Shepard. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, 
It's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 46. Mayfield looks to throw. And this one caught downfield by Evans. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 23 yards on the play. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Back to throw again. To Shepard, complete over the middle. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now Mayfield. Completes this again to Shepard. And the Buccaneers are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not. And he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. Going to the air again with Mayfield. This is caught. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second and goal from the one. They'll run for it. This is right. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Rashad White punching it in from a yard away. And the Buccaneers have taken the lead. Sometimes offense can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Sheds off the tackle and able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Second and nine. Tua sets up to pass it. And he'll 
slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. The improv act there, good for nine. And now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Good work on the scamper by Tongue of Iloa. It's a first down. Bottom line is that he is just something else as a runner because there are not many QBs in this league who can rip off a game that big. And he did it with the defense giving him a little extra attention after he hit him on a run earlier this series. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 38. A run with Mostert up the middle. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. The way things have gone in this one, the running game's been something of an afterthought, and that's not been too bad for them, has it? Yeah, the offensive returns have been good, but I guess we figured he and the ground game would be a bit more involved. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second down at seven. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. Yaya Diaby. He's the one who got in there. He gets the sack. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Throwing now is Chugamailoa. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Hill. And he showed a nice little juke, but then the window quickly closed. Two yards on the pickup there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right. They're kind of played into their hands. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Buccaneers offense and running back Rashad White set to take over again. And as we take a look at some of the highlights, we see just how impactful he's been. He and his quarterback have such a great chemistry together, and it's been on full display throughout the contest. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm not much a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. He'll look to throw. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Broken tackle. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, 
You're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 36. That third down conversion, good for 23. With that last completion, CD is now over 400 yards passing in the game, and quite a few of those have come via some pretty big strikes downfield. Certainly not afraid to challenge this secondary, and it's been successful. I like your observation there, partner, because I agree. This is a group more than capable of torching a secondary any week is evidenced by their combined stat line here. And in the time we have remaining, wouldn't shock me at all to see them take another deep shot. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. A nice stick and stop for a loss here from Jalen Phillips. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. They go with White on the counter. And he'll take this one down to the 36. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 53. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So give him three on that drive. You know, normally you'd say, we'll take it. But the way points have been flying around, it feels like a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, you just have to wonder. Our field goal is going to be enough because, as you pointed out, the way touchdowns have been scored, does kicking a field goal actually put you at a disadvantage the rest of the way? After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Now Tua. Short throw to Smith. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. In motion, Hill. Off of play action, tongue of Iloa. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Down the sideline he goes, and finally wrestled down at the 11. A big play there on the catch and run. 58 yards. And normally when you think about huge field flipping plays like this, it's that shifty slot receiver, that burner on the outside. Not here. That's a tight end doing work down the field. Where's the oxygen mask? He's going to need it after that one. A big, big play. 
A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Here's Tua. He goes back to who else? It's Hill. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, and that was a nice job of improvising, but it's not normal. Usually when the screen pass is taken away, you're taught to just throw the ball at the ground at the feet of the receiver so that you don't get it intercepted and just start over. But he ended up finding another receiver. On the ground, this is Devon A. Chan. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Devon A. Chan with his second touchdown of the night. And the Dolphins have cut it back within a score. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play, and they actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and the lead is down to a field goal. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the drive finished off with a touchdown run from Devon Achan. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and ten. Mayfield now. Out to the right here to Shepard. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. They'll bring one of the tight ends in motion left. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Second and five. Throwing. Mayfield. But looking for Godwin again, and he's got him once more. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 43. 14 yards that time for number 14. Charles, he's now over 400 yards passing in this one. It feels like he has a zillion completions. Just a very memorable effort from a guy that we thought could be in line for a big game, and he has exceeded our expectations. That he has, and I'm not really surprised at all because when you look at this offensive unit, they are loaded across the board. And, of course, the guy throwing them, he's a big-time player himself. They brought it from start to finish and really helped get the better of the opposing secondary. Mayfield off the play fake. Looking and finding Shepard on the crossing route. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in a defense. And he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Mike Evans. 
27 yards. And the Buccaneers are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. And this is obviously quite a performance. And most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that, truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches. He's been the headliner. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa, where the fourth quarter will begin with a kickoff following the score on the final play of the third quarter. McLaughlin now to kick this one away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Dolphins about set to go to work on offense. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 26. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. In motion, Hill. Play action. Now it's Tua. Rolling to his right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Kalijah Kansi able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches, I always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. And they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. They're going deep for Hill. It's caught inside the 25. And he gets this down deep into Tampa Bay territory. It's a big play there for Miami. 65 yards. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. Third down. All you're thinking is, what can we do to keep this drive going to get enough yardage to move the sticks? You're certainly not thinking about taking this with almost the length of the field. But that's exactly what happens here. What a play and what a change of fortunes. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Two are going to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Smith. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid game to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. Facing a second and three. Ball on the 10. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the Dolphins are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he is in. Touchdown, Miami. Raheem Mostert, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. 
So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Sanders now to add the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So the drive there took six plays, and it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Moster. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First downs a must on this drive as they start out here first and ten. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. to run again here with White. And he'll get this to about the 34, a gain of just three. And this is the worry because sometimes you can get a little too predictable in spots like this. You know you're going to run the ball, but they know you're going to run the ball as well. And now you look up and you're staring at an important third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Mayfield to throw it. Pushing his way inside the 40. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Now that's a killer because you think you've got it absolutely covered, and then he hot foots it out of there and picks up a first down. Drives you crazy as a defense. Looks like you're exactly right. Looked like a for sure stop on third, and then the tables turn. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 30-yard line. They'll send a receiver in motion left. From the gun, Mayfield looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it's second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, Something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open. That makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And Godwin going to have a box first down as he's down at the 17-yard line. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now back to the ground game with White. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Mayfield. He completes it right side to White. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And third and one now. And that's going to do it. 
With that last throw, he surpasses Norm Van Brocklin's mark of 554 passing yards in one game, set more than 70 years ago, way back in 1951. Well, he's had help from his offensive line and his receivers, but this has been an incredible individual performance. Godwin, the motion man. Mayfield from the gun on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown! Cade Otten from eight yards out. And the Bucs get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Now that's certainly an important touchdown there. It makes this a two-score game. But as we've seen, no lead is safe in this one with the way these two offenses have lit up the scoreboard. I would imagine that on their sidelines, they're both yelling at their defenses, hey, you want to get involved here? One big play from you, that could win the game for us. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So that drive goes eight plays. And Kate Otten capped things off with a touchdown grab. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 27. Now they'll send Waddle in motion left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six and it'll be second down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. From the 33, here's a second down and four. Looking to pass to him. Throw caught by Achan. Shedding the tackler, and it gives him some room. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. And here's a spot where this offense says, we got to start making something happen. We're down two scores. It's the fourth quarter. We've got to start moving with some urgency. And here's a big play that gives them a ray of hope that they can get back in this one. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 36. They'll send Beckham in motion right. Now two are going to fake the jet sweep and the handoff as he'll drop to throw it. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle, they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against a front that's prepared for him to try and take off. From the 21, here's second and six. They fake the handoff. Now to it. And oh, that would get a right up incomplete. Nearly an interception.
interception in the end zone probably should have been. Third down coming up. Going for the knockout blow right there. I think if I'm up two scores, I'd be worried about an interception. But playing this way is what got him this lead. So you may as well ride it out to the end. Beckham goes in motion left. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. It's a gain of five, and now the question, will the offense stay out there on fourth and one? Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense, diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. From the left hash, this from 34. Sanders' kick is good, and this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and ten. And a fast footwork by Wright. There he goes again. He's on his way. And finally, wrestled down at the 11. A big play there on the catch and run. 65 yards. Boy, this has just been an offensive clinic. It's seemingly been one big play after another after another. And add this one on to the list. When you can bite off more than half the field on one play, <laughs> things are definitely working in your favor. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Now a run straight ahead with Edmonds. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The defense showing some anger after giving up the big play. This time they'll lose one or two. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. Here's White. They set up the screen. And in for the Buccaneers. Touchdown. Rashad White. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Buccaneers have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. McLaughlin for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it was all finished off by a touchdown catch from Rashad White.
Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Miami's offense set and ready to go. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and ten, just shy of the 30. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. From the gun, it's Tua. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Here's second and ten. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Throwing now is Chug of Iloa. Caught left side, it's Beckham. Just a gain of a couple there. And that's going to make it fourth down. He got out of bounds, that's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves, because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. Fourth down, fourth quarter, here's Tua. Flush to his right. The Dolphins can't convert on fourth down. And the Buccaneers' defense holds, and they get the football back. So still over three minutes remaining in this game, but boy, not getting that when that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing, so they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. 
And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. But when you're up by two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. Coming up on the final two and a half minutes. And boy, has it been fun to watch this offense operate. Quite the display. And now they look to polish it off. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. Have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. And I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side. They're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. Now White lost the football. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down and that will not be ruled a fumble. So they recover their own fumble. Now they face third and short. On the handoff, this is White. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Keep it on the ground, White again. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here. Second and 11. They will run with White out of the shotgun. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. White running to the left. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. So Tua and the Dolphins down by two touchdowns, 26 seconds to go. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down.
Here's Tua. Throw out wide is incomplete. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. They'll try again here, second and ten. Throwing Tua. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. This was a fun one today if you like points. A lot of them went on the board. Both offenses were clicking. Charles, these defenses, meanwhile, have a little something to clean up before their next contest. Yeah, neither end zone had a stop sign in it, did they? I mean, for both sides, visit it. And with frequency. Not fun to be a defensive player, but on the offensive side of the ball, those guys had a blast. One team came away with a victory. Even better for them. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.